what's good everybody it's the big hoagie here in today's video i'm going to show you how to slice in logic pro x aka fruity slicing in logic pro x um before we begin as always today's joke what do you do with a dead scientist bury him uh yeah it's a science nerd joke look at the periodic table if you don't know that one um but let's hop into it so there's going to be two ways I'm going to show you today. In a future video, I'll show you how to use the uh, Logix Quick Sampler. But um, this works on all versions of Logic Pro X. If you have not updated yet, I do recommend it though. So first things first, you want to have your sample uh, to be the length of, you know, following your tempo. So in this case, I pulled in a Cymatix 808 Mob uh, Melody Loop. BPM is 128, so I obviously set it to 128, and you can see here it's got that 16, it's a clean 16 bar region. You know, if your uh, tempo's off, you know, you can time stretch. So right now it's off. Um, the quick way to time stretch is hold the Option or Alt key, and you'll see the, like, the waveform pop up. And you can click and drag, and it allows you to time stretch the sample to uh, a clean 16 bar region. So I'm gonna not do that because the sample is already made uh, to the tempo. And now we're gonna jump into the slicing part. So there's two ways. The first way is um, turn on the flex mode by clicking this like DNA looking thing. Uh, you can have it on slicing mode, that's fine. You're gonna double click the sample. And if it's on track, you wanna go to file. You're gonna then go to audio file on the top left and click detect transients. And you're gonna see the transient lines pop up here. Let me zoom out so you can see more of the sample. All right, so you can see here, let me play the uh, first part of the sample. Okay, pretty basic, you can understand that. Then the second half. So you can see there's a lot more noise going on and uh, Logic has detected uh, many more transients on, on that second half of the sample. So you can go up here to the plus and minus sign to adjust the sensitivity and you can see here it's eliminating some of those uh, less prominent transient marks. And you can adjust that to your liking. So this is great to slice on the transients that way you get a, uh, a clean transition between the chops. So that is up to you if that's the way you want to do it. So after you get this done, you're going to right click the sample, hit convert to new sampler track, and you want to go by transient markers because that's just what you created right here. So when you do that, it should slice the sample at all of those transient markers. Um, then when you go in, you can adjust the notes. So it's going to play like the normal sample, Okay, but then what you can do is you can drag the notes uh, around and wherever the note is located, it'll perform that piece of the sample. So that way you can change the sounds real quick. Real quick. Uh, just go like this, just so you can hear a slight difference. Wow, this is very loud. Sorry for that. So you can see it's kind of uh, changed the sample up a little bit. So that's the, the first way to do it. Now the way that I do it, let me power this off. Let me bring this down and unmute it. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the flux mode off. Now what I do is I chop at specific regions. So I'm actually gonna use just the second half because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot more transients on that one. So let's just say I wanted to chop at each bar, so or half a bar. So uh, you just click the sample, and then you click where you want the playhead to be, and you hit Command T, and that just trims the regions like this. So I'm going to uh, chop the sample up, just even, even chops. That way it's easy to rearrange. Now, if I were to bounce this into a sampler track 
right now. So I'm gonna play it first. Like it's pretty smooth right now. Uh, some samples that you chop, if you use this method, you might be chopping them when it's not at the transient head. Now what that'll cause is like a, a clicking sound in the, in the chop. To fix that, you can highlight the whole region. You go to info, uh, or the info, geez, the inspector window, and you can see these fade in and fade out knobs. Um, I usually use around five or 10, depending on the sample. So in this case, I'm just gonna use five. So I fade in five and I fade, fade out five. Now you can see it creates those fade curves on all the regions. That way, when there's the transition between each chop region, it has a smooth transition. So um, it's the same as last time. Now you're gonna wanna right click the sample and hit convert to sampler track. But this time, instead of transient markers, you're going to do regions because you just chopped them up into separate regions. And when you hit OK, it'll create the track and you can see it's chopped into nice even regions. So uh, let me again lower this velocity and Play, it'll have this chopped pattern. Now obviously not every rearrangement is going to sound good. Take your time on doing that. Uh, but if you mess around with that you can really find a creative way to take a used sample or a sample of something you're interested in and create it into something useful for your beat. So I hope this was helpful guys. Again, give me hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.